These are Chuck Taylor All-Star Converse Low Tops. Made with a floral laced interior and eye-catching regal exterior, these shoes exude elegance. Much like today's queen, Rashawn Scott. Rashawn is a talented actress, a powerhouse of a singer, and recently starred on the main stage at the Second City. She is one of a kind. Hi, my name is Damian Jason White, and this is Giddy as a Child. Get it, chicken. Hey, Rashawn, it's Damien. Hey, Damien, what's up, fam? Oh, I think you know why I'm calling you. Oh, you trying to get some chicken? Yo, I'm always trying to get some chicken. Yo, let's do it. All right, I will well, see you soon then. Okay. All right, see you then. All right, bye. Okay. Bye. Hey! What's How up? Are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Better now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for meeting me. Yeah, they got new flavors. These are limited editions. What I got a vote, for, so they got watermelon, braces, mm, classic. Oh, apple, and cherry. Do you need that many gummy bears? Yeah, I gotta try all the flavors. Well, the deal is two for two. These are so cute! Right? Thank you, purple is one of my favorite colors. I mean, purple's a color royalty, you so. You did such a good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, these are mine? For now, yeah. All right. Today we're heading to the edge of downtown Chicago to an area known for its industrial grit, the Fulton Market District. Oh man, uh, I feel so bad that I'm walking around with this umbrella. And I don't want your umbrella because one, it's not raining. It is and raining. No, it's not. It's sprinkling at best. So what? You're trying to say that I have this umbrella for show? Yeah, you do because do. Um, it is. we're in Chicago, it's the windy city. It blows mm -hmm. so bad that this will just get fucked. Yeah. I'm from the Northwest, homie. We put hoods on. It rains all the time. Today's chicken of choice is Gus's world famous fried chicken, known for its delicious Nashville hats. So how old were you? when you like realize you had the performer like five, uh, six, somewhere around there? I mean, I've even from a little kid, I've always been singing. My like dad would play music in the house, my mom would play music in the house and I would run around sing to that. I'd make up my own little musicals mm -hmm. and my brothers would be like, stop singing so much, you're so loud. You got this shit not gonna go. So when did you um when did you realize you wanted to get into comedy? Like when did I want to be a comedian? Yeah. I feel like I've always wanted to be an entertainer. Always, like, I was the only girl. Mm -hmm. I have two brothers, and I have like 13 cousins, and there's one other girl, so mm -hmm. there's like a lot of like attention to like try to get. Mm -hmm. And I was just the nosy one who would just like sit under the table while mm -hmm. my aunties were all talking and stuff, and then like repeat those jokes back to my friends at school, and I would get in trouble <laughs> for repeating those jokes because they're like inappropriate. Yeah. I was president of the band and the drama club, so you know I had no sex at all with anyone. My experience was very different. <laughs> so you did, uh, did you tour with Second City before Art of Falling or was that after Art of Falling? So we did Art of Falling and then I went back to touring, so I was just doing like patch clothes and stuff. <laughs> How long did you tour for? I toured for like two and a half months. Okay. Maybe. They told me I could literally do whatever I wanted on the stage, and so that day I like hopped my ass up on that piano, like I slid across. Take a girl to brunch, I can use a mimosa! I had to I'll make sure I had like properly lotioned every day because I was like sliding across that piano. And... Uh, I wish I could sing half as good as you. Like, your voice is just so angelic to me. <laughs> it really Thank is. Thank you. Like, Thank you. You're just a really talented, talented human being, and all the success you've gotten, like I said, is well deserved. Um, so, as a female, mm -hmm. African American female, in the comedy, world how I don't I, I have an idea of what that 
might be like for you, but I've never experienced. Because for me, as an African American man, it's different because you get like pigeonholed to play certain roles mm-hmm. sometimes. So as a female doing comedy, what has that been like for you so far in Chicago uh, professionally? Professionally, mm-hmm. it has been, it's like a roadblock in a way. It's like a roadblock that should just be like an open door mm-hmm. because there are so many of us who want to do this, who don't see other people like us. Mm-hmm. It's discouraging, and when you find a group of people who are like you, you're more inclined to like that like thing going off in your brain that says like I'm funny and hilarious. These other people think so too. I think people underestimated me at first. They, I like the biggest insult someone could think is that I am not capable of doing something. Like I love to play a wide range of characters. I have a, lots of skills. When people like deny that or not even give me the, the shot, I did, was in a uh, writing workshop where everyone had their pieces and they would assign people stuff. Not one person assigned me a single thing to read, and I was like, I don't know if you bitches know this, but like I'm Rashawn Scott, right. and I c- I could play any character that you could possibly want, and. It's even, it's the stupid stuff. It's like, you go out on stage and you like say, oh, we're brother and sister and the audience laughs. Cause they can't suspend disbelief enough that like a white person and a black person could pretend to be brother and sister. Yeah. Then it's a bunch of jokes about, oh, I'm black and you're white and look how different we are. It's like, oh, that is so boring. So cliche, that's so, that's some Bush League bullshit. Yeah. When we could just get to the root of what the problem is. Whatever the scene is going to be, excuse me, this chicken is good. No, it really is. I just, I've seen this nonsense. People who are cl- like someone who hasn't even got a full thought out be tagged out. I've been like hit on a tag out, like move out of the way. Right. Is that some bullshit? If we were anywhere else, I'd smack the shit out of you. But we have to be on our best behavior right. because everybody's looking at us because if there's one black person in a room of like 30 and you do something wild. Yep, you're the one that's like the crit, yeah. Right, and and afterwards too, like the culture of it, like everybody has to stay and drink afterwards. Mm. These boys and girls get fucking trashed left and right. And I'm like, no, nope, I'm not gonna be stumbling out of here drunk, no way. No way, because tomorrow someone's gonna say some shit about no. it and I don't like that. There was a situation mm-hmm. when I was on a Herald team at IO, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, we were doing the dream. Okay, I flashed. And that's when you bring up an audience member and that's you ask them about day. the day, and then you improvise around that. And the person that got on the stage was the African American mm-hmm. guy, oh, and okay. I was the only African American guy on the back line. So like. <laughs> When the guy was done giving his interview, there was like a hesitation where no one like went out like, to play the guy. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing this. No. <laughs> Just because, no, you can play this character. If I wasn't here, what would you have done? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm ready to work. If you could do any show on Broadway. Oh, yeah. like, like a dream show? Yeah, your dream role on Broadway. Dream show would be like an original show that's a character that I developed. But if I had to mm-hmm. pick something, Company is my one of my favorite musicals. I would play Bobby, the main character, Robert, because that song, Being Alive, mm-hmm. uh, it's like... Uh, he wants someone so badly to make him feel like he exists right. and that's kind of how I feel when I'm on the stage Like I feel the most alive and where I'm supposed to be on the stage because I can kind of control How I want the audience to react to me because it's I give as much as they give me and it's just like uh, Somebody hold me too close somebody uh, make me aware Someone who like it or not will always be there And like, that's the most consistent relationship I've ever had, was at the stage. Because it doesn't talk back. Right. (laughs) It doesn't talk back, it allows me to do what I need to do, and when I'm ready to leave, I can leave. And it's, again, that emotional honesty. I can totally be myself when I'm on stage. That's something I'm really, I'm really passionate about. (laughs) Start talking a little. So, <laughs> I, I try not to call the women the B word because I think that's a super disrespectful word. Yeah.
yeah, I do call men bitches because I right. think it's like universal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, today was great. Yeah, it was. You're fantastic. You're a quack. A quack. You're a quack. A quack. Um, but um, I'm gonna need the shoes on your feet, Matt. Good day, Mr. White. I got, I got your chicken I got you. Sean, do you need a ride home? Sean, do you want to be in an Uber? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure that's not ever Yeah. <laughs> well, I can, I can, I can get the Uber. Too late! <laughs> Actually, yeah, you call it, dude. Uh, Let's get you a kid. I was just asking. I, I asked because you mentioned getting a lift earlier, so yes. I was like, would you have taken a pool? <laughs> or would you have taken a workout? I, I, I had to know. He tried to send me a <laughs> <laughs>